Hello service people, welcome to another video. Today I want to explain you what are intrinsic functions and which ones are available inside step functions. In a previous video I showed how to create a step functions with Lambda and DynamoDB services and how they can interact together and here you can see display the workflow that we built together. It was basically two Lambda functions with the main one which will put the ticket ID inside a DynamoDB table using the DynamoDB put item node of the step functions. So anyway, during the demo, um, I needed to compute the ticket ID inside the uh, Lambda function, which is something that you can do. But if you want to, you know, manipulate data between states, even just creating like a random field or creating a hash for a password field, these kind of things, you need to create a Lambda function because it's not possible to manipulate data from one state to another. So you can definitely do that. It's not uh, a big issue adding a Lambda function to, you know, manipulate data, but adding functions, obviously, like it means like adding more complexity to the um, workflow and also added cost. And one good rule, especially when you have like a big step function structure is to be as elastic as possible, meaning not adding extra Lambda functions if they're not needed. So here we have the problem, which is like, I have data, I want to manipulate data between states and we have to think about how we can solve it without a Lambda function. And luckily for us, AWS thought about it and they added these so-called intrinsic functions, which are basically functions that can help you perform basic data processing operation without using a task state. Let's first see what are those, so like which function do we have to manipulate data and then um, after that I'm going to show you an example on the AWS console started from this use case. So on the 31st August um, AWS added 14 new intrinsic functions. I'm going to leave the link with the list of all of the new functions, but what I want to focus on is the, you know, you can basically merge JSON objects. You can create UUID as um, I will do later in the demo. You can do like hash functions. And, and if you want to see an example, you go in here in the AWS documentation. And let's see the first one is like interesting functions for arrays, which basically create an array based on a string input. This is kind of basic. Like another interesting one is like if you want to partition an array, let's say you have this input array, the so here we should like focus on the syntax. So you have to say, okay, input array dot dollar, and then the um, intrusive function is called states dot the function name in this case is like states dot array partition. And here you say take the input array, which is this one, comma four, which basically is splitting the array in chunks of four items. And here we have nine items. So we're going to have three arrays. And as you can see, the output is here. And we have this for array, for data encoding, decoding, for hash calculation, JSON uh, data manipulation, math operations, if you need like random. You also have math add uh, for strings, like string split. Mm. I suggested to go through the list because they're very useful. Um, intrusive function you can use and or add in your uh, workflow. So now we're seeing like an example. I want to implement two different intrinsic functions, which basically are generating UUID and adding this record inside DynamoDB and also creating like a hash string based on the input. So let's move to the AWS console. So I am on the step function dashboard in here. I am on the DynamoDB put item. And basically I am receiving the ticket ID from the previous step, which is the Lambda function. What I want to do now is to create a UUID. So not use the ticket ID, but use like a UUID created by the intrinsic function. So the syntax for the UUID is like so. So it's like states.uuid. And what I want to do is to also add like a hash function just to show it like how it works. So I'm going to just create a new item. So a new attribute on the item command here, let's call it like ticket hash. And what I want to do is to use the ticket ID received from the Lambda function and 
uh, hash it with a function called like SHA1. So let me have a look on the, so let me have a look on the syntax, which is like, so the syntax is like so, so it's always like states, like all the intrinsic function starts with states dot hash uh, dollar data. Here I have to put ticket ID because it's the data that comes from the previous step of the Lambda function. And here is dollar algorithm. I'm going to just put um, constant value, so SHA1. So this is like basically doing a hash function with an input of the ticket ID that I received from the Lambda um, function here. So the previous step using the SHA1 algorithm. So here we have two intrinsic functions, the UID and the hash. So now if I click apply and exit and save, I'm going to do save anyway. Well, here is showing me an error because it's saying the value of the field must be a JSON path. Let me check. So probably the error is here state hash ticket oh maybe this one has to be escaped with a single tick let me try again yes the error has disappeared so now we can go back and test out our uh, state machine so i go in here actually let me copy the input value of the previous execution so it was just this one purchase ticket static execution Let's do like intrinsic. So basically I'm passing the action purchase ticket and run the function. So execution, we should also see what's happening here. I see an error. Let me check what it is. So actually I forgot something when I use the hash function in here, you have to specify dollar dot payload and then dot ticket ID. There was also another error. So I click save again and launch the execution. So I click start execution. Here is like action. And click start execution. Now let's see, all green, great stuff. So all tasks were successful. Now what I would expect is actually, oh, let me actually check in here. Ticket hash, you see, we see the hash of the ticket ID. Here we have, we see the UID. And just to double check, I'm going to the download B table, ticket table, explore table items, and we have it. So it's working with the intrinsic function, which is pretty, pretty good. So yeah, in this example, we use the new uh, intrinsic functions for generating UUID and uh, also to create a hash from a string, in this case, a ticket ID. But this is very useful, even like, let's say you need to encode the code base64, you have literally like have a look on the list of the new intrinsic functions. I think it's a very great uh, added value from AWS. All right, guys, I hope the video was useful. Let me know if uh, you have any questions on the intrinsic functions. And if you already use them, let me know like which are your use case. So thanks again for watching and see you on the next one.